General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, presents The Lone Ranger. Fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Hail Silver. Hooray! And here's the Lone Ranger. A long time ago, a man fought an enormous animal bigger than an elephant. When I found the bones of that animal in the desert, I realized that size alone doesn't always win. That little man must have prepared himself to conquer the monster. He must have known, even in those days, that champions are made, not born. And that's still true today. Anyone hoping to become a champion needs lots of energy to sharpen his skills... And to back those skills with power. Right, Lone Ranger. One of the big reasons champions choose Wheaties is for energy to help them get on their way. It's easy to see where that energy comes from when you know there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Friends, keep in mind this advice from the Lone Ranger. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. Late one night in the town of Longhorn, Deputy Sheriff Hank Logan noticed a dim light in the bank. Deciding to investigate, he circled the building. Near the back door, he saw four ground-hitched horses and a man standing guard. Hank shouted, Hey, what's the passage? Hey, what's this? Why, the gang's lookout opened fire. <laughs> Hank went down with a bullet in the shoulder, but the shot startled the town. As Scar and his gang hurried from the bank, Marshal Joe Clancy and the score of men rushed to the street. Hey, saddle boys, clear out of here fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wounded deputy raised his gun, took careful aim, and fired. Oh! Jake, you all right? Oh, I'm, I'm hit, Scar. The brother who shouted the alarm fired that shot. I shot him once this time. I'll finish the job. Oh, there's no time for that now. See that Jake stays in the saddle. Get going. Get him! Get him! Oh. A short time later, Scar Bascom and his men reached the hills above Longhorn. Oh, 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 oh. There they halted to examine Jake's wound. Nitro and Clyde Green helped him from the saddle. Easy, him, boy. <laughs> Lean on me, Jake. Yeah, that's it. There you are. Thanks. Nitro, get a candle from my saddlebag and light it. Oh, we can't risk a light. These hills will be full of posse ones, Scar. You gotta take the chance. It's too dark to see the wound without light. Get the candle. All right. Uh, I think I'm hurt bad, Scott. Uh, we'll know for sure in a minute, Jake. Nitro, where's that candle? Right here. Let's strike a match and light it. They still say we're taking a big chance. Well, we've got to take it. Jake's the only one of us who knows anything about this part of the country. Anything happens to him, we're lost. Oh, take it easy, Scott. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jake. I've got to rip your shirt from the wound. Bring that light closer, Nitro. Yeah. That's it. Hey, you've been hit bad, Jake. Yeah, you need a doctor. There's a doctor in Longhorn. We can't get back there. We might run into a posse. That's right. Where else can we find a doctor, Jake? Uh, there's one in Sandy Springs. We'll pass there on our 
Hey, there's a board. Will you be able to make it that far? I'll try. Well, I'll do my best for you now. I'll bandage the wound. I don't think he'll last long, Scott. I'll last. I've got to. Yeah, that's right, Jake. You've got to. Uh, don't worry, Scott. I'll get you on the boys to the border. I'm counting on you to do just that. Knowing his life depended on reaching Sandy Springs, Jake set a fast pace for himself and his friends. He gritted his teeth against the pain that had become steady torture. In spite of his determination, consciousness was growing dim. But the wounded killer succeeded in guiding his friends to the vicinity of Sandy Springs. Wait! Oh! oh, 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 oh. He signaled a halt and rasped. Uh, Sandy Springs, just ahead. Main trail to town. Over to right. Be better if we can't. Hey, Jake! Hey, grab him, Clint. I got him here. I'll help ease him to the ground. No use, Scar. He's dead. No. You sure? See for yourself. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, what'll I do with the body? We've no tools to dig a grave. Leave it on the ground and cover it with his blanket. <laughs> yeah, we'll him out of the way and we'll be able to split the loot three ways instead of four. This is no good to us if we don't live to spend it. we got to find someone to guide us to the border. We'll have to cross the Badlands. We'll have to pay a guide. Well, Payne's better than staying here to be caught. They'll hang all three of us. Yeah, right. I want a guide and I want him fast. Nitro, head for town, find one. I don't know anything about Sandy Springs. All you have to do is find a guide. Where will I find one at this hour of the night? It'll be daylight by the time you reach town. Now hit the saddle. Uh, How do I know you and Clyde will stay here? You might decide to make off of that cash while I'm gone. And I might decide to blow your head off if you don't follow orders. Now get going. Uh, Get it. Nitro reached Sandy Springs. He saw an Indian stopping a paint horse in front of Clem Bates' blacksmith shop. Come, Scout. Open up. Easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. Come, Scout. Come the on. Indian was the Lone Ranger's friend, Tonto. Clem Bates greeted him warmly. Tonto! I wonder who was heading this way. I don't often see anyone at this hour of the morning. Well, me glad you opened shop early, Clem. I like to get an early start on my work. I was about to start the fire when you pulled up. How in the world are you? Oh, me fine. Uh, Clem, Scout have loose shoe on left front foot. Well, I can fix that. Yes, sir, Scout. I'll tighten that shoe for you. Is your mask friend with you, Tonto? Oh, no, Clem. No, me plan meet him in hills about noon today. Oh, where's he been? Well, him visit old friends at Mission. A few days travel from here. Me spend week with Chief Thundercloud. Oh, Clem. I shall be. Hello, Mr. Huh? Ah. You have other customer clans. Hi there, stranger. What can I do for you? Plenty. You know the country between here and the border. Oh, I know the country, all right. You need directions? I need a guide. Oh, I I don't hire out as a guide. You'll be well paid. Nope. Maybe your price. I don't hanker to leave town for any price. Hey, hey what's the idea of the gun? You're coming with me. I'm not going anywhere. I got to fix the shoe on my friend's horse. Don't try a move, Ancient. You're covered, too. Your loco drawing a six shoot on us just the because. The first one to make a sound or a fast move will die sudden. But you. You say this redskin's a friend of yours? Of course he's a friend. All right, disarm him. Why, you Do know. Do as I say or I'll shoot him. Oh, dead rat it. I... Right, hurry it up. Tonto, I. Oh, it's I... all right, Clem. It better you follow orders. You smart, Ancient. Uh, count three. No, oh, no, don't, don't bother. I'll not argue with a six gun in the hands of a loco jughead. There. Now drop the guns and kick them aside. Uh, now what? You're both coming with me. Both of us? That's right. You'll be more likely to follow orders if the redskin's life depends on it. Come on. But my horse. You'll ride double on the engine's horse. Leave a spare critter in camp for you to ride to the border. Uh, get gone. During the ride to camp, Nitro watched Tonto and Clem so closely that they had no chance to escape. When they reached the waiting outlaws, Tonto recognized their leader. He exclaimed, Carbascom. That's 
My name, Injun. Does it mean anything to you? Uh, it means heat plenty. Hey, what, what are you talking about, Tonto? Well, go ahead, tell him, Tonto. If he knows who I am, he'll savvy we mean business. They're crooks, eh, Tonto? That's right. Law wants Carbascom and gang for robbery, what? murder. Great land negotiation. How come the engine's so smart? How does he know about us? I reckon we're better known than we figured, boys. It's just as well we're heading for the border. Stow the gear, Nitro, and get set to travel. All right. <laughs> Shortly before noon, the Lone Ranger reached the hills a short distance from the town of Sandy Springs. While he waited for Tonto, Silver whinnied uneasily and pawed the ground. The masked man wondered at the stallion's strange behavior. Was it a sign of approaching danger? I wish you could talk, big fella. Easy, steady now. Investigating the area surrounding the campsite in search of an explanation of Silver's actions... The Lone Ranger found Jake's blanket-covered body. Then he heard the sound of approaching hoofs. He drew his gun and waited for the rider to appear. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Remember the emblem or nameplate on your family car? You've seen it. Maybe it's on the horn button or the back of the car... Maybe up front by the grill. Some cars use the car name on a shield for an emblem. Others use a symbol like a knight's helmet or a sailing ship. They're mighty handsome, these emblems, which leads me to this big news. Now you can get models of famous auto emblems free of extra cost with Wheaties. There's a solid steel model of an actual car emblem inside each special Wheaties package. Choose from Nash, Packard, Studebaker, Hudson, DeSoto, Dodge, Chrysler, and Plymouth. Eight brilliant emblems in all, one to a packet. Big enough to cover most of your hand, these emblems are solid steel discs with the colorful designs raised, not just painted on. To get them, look for Wheaties packages that picture an auto emblem on the front. You'll find that emblem inside the package. Get your Wheaties auto emblems at your grocer's now while supplies last. <laughs> to continue. Marshal Joe Clancy had followed the trail of Scar and his men from the town of Longhorn. He was still following their tracks when he saw the Lone Ranger waiting for him with a drawn gun. Stop where you are. Oh, hold it, hold, hold. Don't reach for your gun. I'd be a fool to try it. Mind if I dismount? Go ahead. Easy. <laughs> Who are you? Joe Clancy, United States Marshal from Longhorn. That mask covering your face, I can't tell whether you're Scar Bascom or one of the killers who traveled with him. I don't know where Bascom is, but here's one of his killers. You're holstering your gun. Yes. I'm not a killer, and I'm not running from the law. And why the mask? If we had met before, you'd understand my reason for wearing it, Marshal. Whatever your reasons for wearing it, you had a chance to gun me. If you were a killer, I'd be a dead man now. Were you uh, looking for this man? Who is he? Jake Allison. He traveled with Scar Bascom. But I didn't know the Bascom gang were in this part of the country. They robbed the bank in Longhorn and wounded my deputy. <laughs> From the looks of the tracks, they've been here and gone. Yeah. And I think my friend Tonner was with him. Huh? See these pebbles? No, someone wearing moccasins stood here. Kicked those pebbles together. Into an Indian sign. I've seen it before, and I know what it means. I don't savvy. Tonto left here with those killers, or he's trailing them. Here are the tracks of a horse with a missing shoe. It'd be easy to trail that, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Hey, who are you calling? My horse. I left him a short distance away. <laughs> I'm going after Tonto. What about this body? I haven't time to bury it. I'll take it to town, then follow you. I expected an argument, Marshal. I thought you might try to hold me here. <laughs> I'd do just that if I thought you were an outlaw, mister. But I've heard of an engine named Tonto, the masked man who rides a horse called Silver. You go ahead. Your friend's after the Bascom gang. I'll see you later. I'll follow that trail and overtake you. Good. 
Impossible. At sundown that night, Scar signaled a halt. The outlaws shared a cold meal with Tonto and Clem Bates, then continued traveling until darkness. They dismounted and made camp. Clem Bates sighed heavily as he spread a blanket on the ground. We're done for, Tonto. As soon as these crooks reach the border, they'll kill us. Oh, you not worry, Clem. Me tell you, me plan, meet Lone Ranger in hills north of town. Yeah, but what but we plan, meet in place... Little way from where crooks leave body, a dead outlaw. Oh, what's that got to do with us and the trouble we're in? Well, we leave sign on ground for Lone Ranger. Him find pebbles, him follow tracks. If he don't find the sign, he won't follow us. Maybe he won't see it. And even if he does, we're, we've been traveling over ground that shows no tracks. We might as well face it, Tano. We'll never get out of this alive. <laughs> Lone Ranger followed the outlaw's trail as long as possible. Then the tracks disappeared on the rocky, hard-packed ground. He spent some time searching for the trail. Then Marshal Clancy arrived. Oh, 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 oh. Hello, Marshal. I didn't have any trouble following your trail, mister. We'll have a lot of trouble from now on. Huh? See for yourself. Ah, looks like you're hiding the tracks. We're making doggone sure they don't leave any. Yes. If your engine friend's after him, he'd leave a trail we could follow. Uh, Tonto may be with them. Well, traveling with Bascom and his killers? They must have captured him. Why? I don't know. I do know that if it were humanly possible, Tonto would have left a trail. The fact that he didn't means just one thing. He couldn't. That's right. In that case, he's in trouble. Yes. We've got to find him. But with no tracks to follow, we haven't a chance. We haven't a chance, but Silver might. What do you mean? Silver and Tonto's paint horse scout have traveled together for a long time. Hey, Silver's listening to you. Yes, I think he knows I'm looking for Tonto and Scout. Don't you, big fellow? You understand, Silver? I'm trying to find Tonto and Scout. On the ground as if he wants to start traveling. I'll give him his head. He's just setting out. Silver, up to you, big fellow. See? He's savage what you're saying. Let's go, Silver. Get up there. Late that night in the outlaw camp where a guard had been posted to stand watch, Tonto and Clem Bates lay in cramped positions, tied hand and foot, while Scar Bascom and Clyde Green slept soundly. Tonto caught the faint sound of distant hoofs. He listened tensely. Then Clem heard the sound. Tonto! Oh, me here, Riley. Traveling fast from the sound of those hoofs. Oh. Maybe a friend. Anyone looking for us would be crawling along real slow, looking for tracks. <laughs> Listen. That's your horse. <laughs> what are you grinning at? Well, me thinks Sky Bascom do for big surprise. Thinking his Indian friend had suddenly taken leave of his senses, Clem subsided into gloomy silence. The distant hoofs came nearer. Nitro awakened, drew his gun, and looked uneasily at Scout. What's him, that uh, quiet down, son. Get better. Quiet, Scout. Easy, fella. Easy. Hey, hey. What's the trouble? Uh, nothing, Scar. <sighs> I thought I heard riders coming this way. Reckon I was wrong. You better take a good look around. Your watch. All right, all right. Nitro investigated the area, found nothing, and returned to camp as Tonto strained his ears listening. The only sounds he heard were the night noises around the camp. Suddenly, these were hushed. He knew the sudden movement of an intruder had silenced them. He looked anxiously at Nitro, hoping the dozing outlaw would not notice the abrupt quiet. Then he saw the Lone Ranger. The masked man moved so stealthily, Nitro didn't hear him until the Lone Ranger closed in. Get your hands up, what? The barrel of the masked man's coat pressed against Nitro's back. 
The startled outlaw whirled. All right, you... A hard fist connected with the side of his head. As Nitro went down unconscious, hey, now, Scarf Ascom wakened. Marshal Clancy followed the Lone Ranger into the firelit clearing in time to hear Scar call... What's going on? What's the rush? Get your hands up, killers. Uh, You're covered. Great shakes alive. Nitro! Nitro! No what? use calling him, Scar. He can't hear you. Stay where you are. Hello, are you all right? Me fine now, Kimasabi. Now, cut your ropes in just a minute. On your feet, Scar. You too. All right, all right. Clyde Green obeyed the Marshal's command, but Scar was slower than his friend. Reaching to the ground as if to steady himself, he grabbed the gun that had been concealed in his blanket. The Lone Ranger saw him and fired. No! My hand! Your hand isn't no. hurt, but your gun is smashed. I'll keep the coyotes covered, mister, while you free Tonto and his friends. Thanks, Marshal. Well, I'm surprised to find you here. Yeah, these crooks captured Tonto in my shop, mister. They wanted us to guide him to the border. It was a case of do it or be killed. There, Tonto. Now you clap. Yeah. Oh, these ropes are tied mighty tight. You're free now, oh, Clem. Thanks, mister. Thanks a lot. Rub your arms to restore the circulation. Uh, we hear crooks talk about bank robbery in Longhorn, Kima Bobby. Them have loot in saddlebags. That's good news, Tonto. I'll take it back to town. But right now, if you keep them covered, mister, I'll try their hands. Go ahead, Marshal. A few minutes later, the prisoner's hands were tied and Marshal Clancy had completed an examination of the outlaw's saddlebags. Pleased that he had found the loot intact, he helped the outlaws mount while the Lone Ranger kept them covered. Will you need help to take these men to town, Marshal? When I was in Sandy Springs, I asked the sheriff to round up a posse and follow me, mister. It sounds like he's done what I wanted. There's some riders coming now. I'll be downright glad to help keep watch on these polecats till they're behind bars. In that case, Tonto and I will be on our way. Are you ready to travel, Kimasabi? Uh, be ready. Easy, steady, silver. And what we want to stop at blacksmith shop. Scout need new shoe. All right, we'll ride to the nearest one and take care of it. Adios. Goodbye, Adios, Mister. Must count. to see that masked man leave. Cheer up, Marshal. You might run into him again sometime. I hope so. I'd sure like to see a lot more of the Lone Ranger. We'll return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, Prisoners at Large. Diving Doris is 13, and she is the diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Say, you ought to try Cheerios, the delicious food with go power. Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Add milk, and you've got just the breakfast to start a healthy, happy day. It's real muscle-building food. Every spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. They help give you healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. So eat Cheerios. People will say... She's feeling her Cheerios. Desperados who escaped from prison were determined to kill the Lone Ranger. And the masked man walked right into their well-planned trap. For one of the most gripping dramas in the thrill-packed life of the Lone Ranger, be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. Tonight's drama was written by Betty Joyce. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>